I bought this Epson V600 scanner six years ago now. So I'm in a position now to give you a reliability report. And I'm pleased to say it's been great. Uh, I've scanned in a lot of photos, a lot of color negatives. And when my kids were studying online throughout COVID, they were doing homework assignments and I scanned those in and sent them back to the school. And it's been really great. Now, the one thing that I haven't tried so far, the slides, because I've never shot slide film. But my father passed away recently, and when I went to start clearing out the house, um, it was one of my objectives to try and get as many old photos as I could. And I came across a little box of slides and that gave me an opportunity to um, try scanning in some slides. So that's what I'm going to do on this video. After scanning in thousands of colour negatives, it's been a real pleasure dealing with slides, actually. The negatives are horrible. They're very flimsy. You've got to watch out for fingerprints all the time. And they have a habit of, like, curling, so they're very difficult to keep flat so when you put them in into the the holder you sort of clip them in to keep them flat with slides you've got none of those problems because each frame has its own cardboard holder and that that holder uh, keeps keeps the the slide flat and also with the handling it's easy you know because there's you don't have to worry about touching the slide because you can just holds the, the, the holder. So it's a bit different um, putting the slides into the, the scanner holder. You don't have to clip them in. All, you need, all the holder really does is just locate them in the, in the correct position. So there's capacity for four slides. One, two, three, four. And that's window C. So you need to make sure that the, the C peg here locates onto the, this little C cut out here. So just, just put that in. And orientation, there's, there's a little decal on, on the holder to assist you. So top, sorry, it's my finger, top, bottom, and you'll see that that writing's back to front. So the, the front of the slide has got to face down. And with some of the holders, there's, there's writing, which makes it very easy. Um, with others, there's not. So you either need to guess, or with, with these other ones that I've got, they've got no writing. There's a, a flush side, which is the front side, and then on the back, it's not flush. There's like a little groove that goes around the outside. And you just need to look at the slide against the light source to get the right orientation. It's not too difficult. And as I said, handling slides has been a much, much better experience than handling color, color negatives. And of course, the other, the other uh, big difference is that uh, colour neg negatives, as the name implies, are negative. So the, the dark parts of the image are the lightest on, on the negative and vice versa. And that's not true of slides. Um, when you look at a slide, it's how you would expect it to be so that the slide can go into a projector. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the background. So let's um, have a look how I got on with scanning in slides. Once you've got your slides loaded into the scanner, you need to start Epson scan. And some parts of this procedure take quite a long time. So what I'll do, I'll edit those parts out of the video so you're not left just watching a taskbar with nothing happening. Epson scan has got four modes. The only mode that's not suitable for negatives and slides is office mode, so don't use that. Home mode allows you to make a limited number of adjustments, and professional mode lets you make a lot of adjustments. And full auto mode is 
exactly what it says. It's just um, a very easy way of getting images into the computer. All you need to do is just press one button. So in auto mode, click the customize button, um, file save settings, if you, and browse here. Um, this will tell the computer where to store the images. Choose the folder you want. And also the, the file format, uh, bitmap, JPEG, PDF, TIFF, multi-TIFF. TIFF is lossless, uh, JPEG is compressed. I think bitmap is lossless. Multi-TIFF allows you to put multiple images into one file. These options here, print image matching for JPEG and TIFF, I don't know a lot about this, but I understand it's a, a standard. I think it's an Epson standard. So when, when you make corrections to, to the color on your display and you save in one of these formats, if you print on a compatible Epson printer, I believe the colors will remain the same. But as I say, I don't know very much about it and I don't use it myself. So choose your folder, uh, choose your format. I'm gonna choose TIFF. Okay, that. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, you got to tell it whether it's a reflective, a photograph or document, or a transparent film or negative. Uh, our negatives are transparent. My slide, our slides are transparent. There's no option here to choose positive or negative because the the, the software uh, determines that for itself. The resolution in auto mode is limited to 1200. In the other modes, you can choose a higher resolution, but say so this one just 1200. This mode is a, is a good way, if, you, if you've got thousands of negatives or slides and you, you just want to get them into your computer quickly to see what you've got, this, this is probably the best way and you don't want to use a, a very high resolution, resolution. Just see what you've got first and then go back and choose the, the, the photos that you want to work with and then uh, work with them in a different, different mode. Color restoration, I found to be quite effective. That, that does quite, quite a good job of restoring color. And dust removal will remove dust and scratches. So once you've got it set up, all you need to do is just put the slides into the, the holder in the scanner and just click on scan. And that does everything with no user intervention required. Uh, it will tell you it's saving one, two, three, four, and when it's finished, you just put more slides in, hit scan again, and rinse and repeat. So it's a, a very good way of just getting images into the computer quickly, but there are limitations on the resolution and limitations on how much correction you can do to each image, but it's actually um, a very efficient method. Okay, so that's um, that's the, the full time mode. Okay, let, let's imagine that you've got thousands of negatives or slides, and what you've done, you've used full auto mode just to get them all into your computer, so you can you can take a look through and see what you've got. And there are some some images that you really like, and you want to do some more work on them. So so take those images. Uh, whether they be negatives or slides and put them back into the scanner and now go into professional mode and this gives you a lot more options and once you've set all these options you can actually save them with, under a, a name of your choice so that next time you go through the procedure you don't have to set everything up you, you just choose um, whatever you, whatever setting you called it and that will then recall all of the original settings. So document type is film. Uh, it would be better if they, they said reflective and transparency but film is a transparency. And film type positive for slides or color negative for negatives. There's another one for black and white negatives. Image type, 
um, 24 or 48 bit color and grayscale black and white I've chosen the 48 bit color the resolution as I said with the auto mode the auto mode is restricted to 1200 and this really depends how big you want your images and when I was doing this I, I knew that I wanted some of these images for YouTube and that will be a 1080p format uh, which has a width of 1920 pixels so I just did some experimentation and I found that 800 and 1200 uh, produced images that were so small and 2400 was just over 3000 pixels so that that was enough for what I needed it for so I'm going to choose 2400 dpi and then what we can do with with the slides in the scanner is a preview okay so there's a preview the, the the four images and what we can do now we can make um, color adjustments and corrections on these images before we actually scan them and this was something that we couldn't do in auto mode so this is a lot more flexible now if we just choose one image just select select one image we can make various adjustments on it there's um, also exposure histogram tone correction uh, image adjustments and color palette we, we can't do these options if we've got more than one image selected they're all grayed out now if we just if we just got one image we, we can and I don't use these because to be honest I, I don't really know what I'm doing you know I, I could play around but I, I don't know if it's making the image better or worse so I, I don't tend to use those so what I what I normally do is just select all these ones are greyed out and the only, the only one that's left is the auto exposure if we reset it there's no auto, auto exposure you see the images are quite dark but if we do the auto exposure it makes them a lot better and then there's more options below uh, the unsharp mask will just add, add some sharpening and you can choose between low medium high I just use medium grain reduction I, I don't use grain reduction one, one of the things about film photography that people like is the actual film grain so that there doesn't seem much point in, remo in removing it and grain reduction is the same as um, noise reduction for digital photography it, it might remove gr grain and remove noise but it also removes detail so I, I don't use that color restoration I do use if you, if you look up here that actually you know does quite a good job with the color restoration the backlight correction I don't use because it, it, it's a bit too much um, the, the, the images at the moment don't look too bad if I click backlight correction it makes them very very bright uh, even if I select the, the low setting they're still very very bright and so I, I don't tend to use that turn that one off and then uh, digital ice uh, this this technology is, is sort of um, a bit sort of um, magical um, I, I don't know a lot about it but what I understand is that the scanner uses an, an infrared scan to detect dust and scratches and then once it's done that and got the information about where the dust and scratches are it can then correct them with the the regular scan um, so it seems, it seems to be quite clever and I, I normally it adds time that's the only thing it adds time to your scan so if, if you've got a lot to do you may not want to use it if you haven't got too many it should improve the image but it will add some time so once you're ready just scan then it comes back to um, this window you, you can select the folder you want to save the images to and the, the format so I'm just going to keep with the, the same folder and TIFF OK and then OK it, it, it will start scanning automatically 
And as I said, this part takes quite a long time, so I'm going to like, edit this all out of the video. It really does take a long time using the professional mode, especially when you start doing a lot of corrections and using the digital image correction and enhancement and dust removal. Just those four slides took about 13 minutes. Uh, and here are the, the scans in my, my folder. And you can see the variation in size depending on the resolution. So it's 2400. 3032 by 1927. This one here, uh, 7198 by 4712, I think I did a DPI 6400. And the ones on auto mode, which was just DPI 1200, 1800 by 1144. So your choice of resolution really depends on how big you want your images. And with this professional mode, um, don't take, you know, what, what I said to, to sort of literally just do lots of experimentations. There, there are a lot of adjustments. So um, just just take a few negatives or slides and play around adjusting various things until you get the result that you want. And if you find that professional mode is a bit too much, a bit too complicated, you could have a look at home mode. That's going to release. That's going to um, erase the preview. But home mode is simpler than professional mode. So here, just use positive film or color negative, and you've got adjustments. But there aren't as many adjustments there there are in professional mode. So that that may be another option. The adjustments you can make on your images are really infinite. You've got all those options in the scan software. And then once you've scanned your image in, you can open it with Photoshop. And then you've got even more adjustments. You, you've got, um, it opens the images in Camera Raw. So you've got all these adjustments and all these adjustments as well. So you could play around to see if um, any of the adjustments make the image look better. And then once, once you've finished in RAW, you can open the image in Photoshop. So uh, what I would normally do for YouTube, first I would make it the, the right size. So I crop it to the, the 16 by nine aspect ratio. Image crop. And then I will get it to the right size. Give it a 1920 width, so it's 1080 height. And then I, I, I normally uh, put in a, a levels adjustment. So I just play around the levels to to make it look a bit better. Everyone's got their their own ideas on, on what they do in, in Photoshop for um, image enhancement. So then once you're happy, then flatten the image, maybe give it a bit, little bit of sharpening. And once you're happy, then save it in whatever folder you want. And um, I scanned in as TIFF, so it was lossless. But when I'm preparing images uh, for, for YouTube, or just to send in emails or for the web, I, I would normally save in JPEG. Okay, well, I hope that was useful. If you've got any uh, comments or questions, please please leave them below. And thank you for watching.